All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen to lesson four from our unit five. This is going to be called modeling and optimization. Um, this really comes down to using calculus in real world type problems. And the word optimization is really what we're going to be focusing on today. It means optimizing a, a certain particular question. So usually the question is going to be what X value maximizes the volume or area or that sort of thing. So we're looking at looking to find the minimums and the maximums of a particular real world problem using an equation. Well, the word modeling in math just means going from the real world into an equation. So I'm going to start off with just like a little how to kind of thing. Um, not every single problem works exactly the same way, but it's kind of the same idea along the way. So here's what you got to do. You need to understand the problem. So read it very carefully. You need to develop a mathematical model, which means just write an equation that models the scenario. Um, usually we can, you're going to graph the function at some point in time. So you might need a graphing calculator. Um, we need to find the domain because recall when we're looking for minimums and maximums, we also have to test endpoints. And so sometimes the endpoints come into play of our domain. Really not also looking at what kind of numbers make sense. Like if you're looking for a volume problem, um, negative volumes don't make sense and neither do negative lengths. So more real world application here. We're going to be looking for critical points and endpoints. So critical points come from derivatives. So that's why the calculus comes into play. You're going to use the calculus to solve that model and you're going to interpret the solution. What does that X equals seven actually mean? Well, it probably means the length of seven maximizes the volume or something like that. All right, let's take a look at what a problem is going to look like. This is a relatively simplistic problem that we can actually solve without calculus, but the number or the problem actually sometimes a little bit easier in calculus. So we have two numbers whose sum is 20. So that means obviously x plus y is equal to 20. But if you recall, we can't really solve a problem. Um, oh, that says product. So we want x, y. Well, we can't solve a problem that has two different variables. So what we need to do is we need to say, okay, if we have x plus y is equal to 20, that means the other number is just the leftover. So 20 minus x. So when we try to find the product, we now have x times 20 minus x. Now, this is a quadratic function that looks like 20x minus x squared. Now, I know all of us can solve this quadratic function to find the maximum. So, I mean, graphically, it's a vertex at the maximum point. Um, and we can do that. That's not a big deal. But here's where the calculus comes in. We can actually find the derivative of this. If this is the product function, we can find the derivative of the function to get 20 minus 2x. And the critical point tells me that when x equals 10, I get 0. So my critical point is x equals 10. But we also have endpoints. Endpoints here are, well, we can't have, well, let's think about this as two positive numbers, first of all. We're really looking at the numbers from 0 to 20. But since we're looking for a maximum thing, we can actually, I mean, endpoints aren't going to matter in this case because the maximum here is the vertex. And since the vertex is in between our endpoints, we're not going to worry about them too much. So my critical point is 10, and that point gives me that horizontal tangent, which means 10 is the number. So when x is 10, 
the other number is 20 minus 10, so it's 10 as well. These are the two numbers whose sum is 20 that will give us the largest possible product. Now that one was pretty simple. And it's obviously very easily done with a graphing calculator, but let's say you didn't have one. Or it's also very easily done with just the, your knowledge of a quadratic function. But not all problems are that easy. So let's take a look at one that might be a little bit more challenging. You have a open top box, so it's just a box without a lid on it. It's made by cutting congruent squares of side length x from a 20 by 25 sheet of tin. And then you bend up the sides and we want to know how large should the squares be in order to make the box hold as much as possible. So you're given a rectangular piece of tin and you're going to be cutting congruent squares out of the corners and then folding up the box. Now, we've done this problem in pre-calculus using what we know about max maximums and minimums. But here what I want to do is do this in the calculus version so we don't necessarily need, or hopefully don't need, a calculator to solve this problem. So if we were to think about our piece of tin, and we cut sections x by x out of this 20 by 25 sheet, of 10, we need to figure out volume. In order to carry the most stuff, it's got to be talking about volume. So you got to remember that volume is length times width times height, or side by side by side, whatever words you want to use there. So if you were to think about this box, the length of the box is not going to be 25. It's going to be the distance 25 minus the x's on both sides. So the length of the box is going to be 25 minus 2x. Likewise, the width of the box is going to be 20 minus 2x. And then the height of that box is going to be when we fold up these sides, that length is going to be x. So notice here we have a cubic function. And so we need to figure out some stuff. First of all, we should probably figure out the domain. The domain of this function, if you were to just think about the graph, obviously I know you guys can graph this. So we have a 0 at 0, at 10, and at 12.5. So this function is going to look like this. So that's 10, that's 12.5. So the domain of this function, well, I don't want any negative x values, so I'm going to start at 0. And here we get some positive volumes. Here we get some negative volumes. So we don't want anything from 10 to 12.5. So we're going to go up to 10. But if we go anywhere past 12.5, it looks like we get positive volumes. But... We don't because that requires negative distances or negative lengths. So if we did 13, we would get a negative 1 here and a negative 6 here. Even though that comes out with a positive volume, it's gotten by, done, by doing negative length. So that doesn't exist either. So this is our whole domain. So we have from 0 to 10. So if we were to find v of x as an expanded polynomial so we can actually do the um, derivative a lot easier, we would get the function 4x to the third minus uh, 90x squared plus 500x. So there's our nice cubic function. And that's just by doing the FOIL and distributing in the x. If we took the derivative of the volume function, we get 12x squared minus 180x plus 500. Well, 
through a little bit of work, you would probably notice that this is not a factorable quadratic. So we would need to do the quadratic formula. So through the quadratic formula, you notice I'm not going to write this out because I think this uh, quadratic formula is pretty straightforward to you guys. You would get x is approximately equal to 3.68 and 11.32. Well, there's a problem. The domain is from 0 to 10. Since this is outside of the domain, it's not going to be used. So we need to check this. Well, not even check that. If we did the endpoints of 0 and 10, notice that your volume would both be 0. So those actually make no difference to us. So the only point that we're going to try here to figure out what is the max volume is 3.68. So if you were to cut, so we want to cut out 3.68 inches as a quarter, corner, and that would give a volume, if we did V of 3.68, that would give a maximum volume of 820.53 cubic inches. And that's just plugging into the original function, not the derivative, obviously. All right, so notice we could do this without graphing on our calculator. In, in um, pre-calculus, you had to graph on your calculator to find this maximum point. But in this particular case, all we had to do is find the derivative, figure out what the critical point was, test your endpoints, but those gave you volumes of zero, so those weren't necessary. Plug that point in to figure out what your maximum volume was. All right, so this is really kind of what we're going to be doing here. You're given a word problem. You need to write the equation that compares or that makes that word problem true or that models that word problem. And you're going to do the calculus to solve for the minimum or the maximum being asked. But again, that one was kind of an easy problem. What about ones that are a little bit harder? So if you were to look at a rectangle inscribed, that means underneath, um, inscribed underneath one arch of the sine curve. So if we looked at the first arch of the sine curve, that goes from 0 to pi. And if we were to look at a rectangle... Let me change the color here. If we were to look at a rectangle underneath, inscribed meaning the corners hit, by the way, we would need to figure some stuff out about this particular rectangle. I'm going to call these points P and Q. We could call the point P x comma sine x x being the distance in the x direction, and then sine of x being the distance from the in the y direction. And that should be obvious because the function itself is sine of x. But then the question is, what is the q value? Or what is the coordinate of q? Well, that makes it a little bit harder. We actually need to figure out what's the x coordinate of q so we can figure out area. We're actually looking at the area function as being something which is this distance here between the x direction and the y direction. Well, the height of my function is sine of x. That's just obvious. The height of my function is sine of x. Now, in order to find the x coordinate of the q coordinate, we have to take into account what do we know about sine. If this distance here is x, so is this distance. Because sine is a very symmetric, and cosine as well, it's a very symmetric function, that means we could call this point pi minus x, because the distance to pi from the origin is here, minus the x direction to get back to here. So the 
x coordinate here is pi minus x. Okay, well, what does that mean? Okay, so the distance here, the length of my rectangle is pi minus 2x. It's the distance from here to here. Pi minus x minus x is pi minus 2x. That gives me the length of my rectangle. All right, well, what does that mean now? The area function is now length times width, and that means I can find the derivative of my area function. So the derivative here, oh, by the way, this is a product, which means we better use the product rule. So the derivative of the first is negative 2x, or sorry, negative 2, scratch that, negative 2 times the second function, which is sine of x, plus the derivative of sine of x is cosine x times this piece. So pi minus 2x times cosine x. Well, we're trying to figure out when this thing is 0. Um, you'll also note, by the way, the endpoints are 0 and pi, but again, in this particular model, 0 and pi give us areas of 0, so that's not going to help us at all. And so what we want to do is we want to figure out when does this function equal 0. Well, in this particular problem, you cannot do it algebraically. So you're going to have to go to your graphing calculator. And you can calculate when this function is 0. And it shows us on our graphing calculator that when x is equal to, let me find it here, when x is equal to about 0 0.71. Is equal to 0. So if we take that 0 0.71, and this was found by plugging in your calculator, finding the 0 of the function, if you were to then take a of 0 0.71, you would find that that comes out to a area, an area of 1.1 2-ish. And if you were actually asked, by the way, what are we being asked? What is the largest area? Okay, so we found the largest area. That's 1.12, but it asks a second question. What dimensions give that area? So this is your length, and this is your width, or height, or whatever you want to call it. So you need to figure out, okay, if I plugged in x equals 0.71 here, I would get a box, uh, let's call it dimensions of pi minus 0 0.71 times 2, which gives me a 1.72 inches long, or units long, and the sine of 0 0.71 would be 0 0.65. So the box, or the rectangle, would have dimensions of 1.72 by 0 0.65 with a maximum area of 1.12. All right, so really it came down to the hardest piece for this particular problem was just to figure out what is the x coordinate of the q point on this particular rectangle. All right. Some of the problems, I'm going to kind of give us all of these here at the same time. There might be a problem or two that deal with economics, and I'm not going to give an example of these. Um, they are in your textbook, though. If you were to be finding maximum profit, it occurs at a production level at which marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Well, if you look down here, marginal revenue is the derivative of the revenue function. Remember, revenue means income, by the way. And marginal cost is the derivative of the cost equation. How much it costs to produce each item. 
And then the profit, this should be obvious by the way, profit is revenue minus cost. And so the marginal profit is the derivative of the profit function. And the last thing I'm going to leave you off here is minimizing average cost the production level at which average cost is the smallest is where the average costs equal the marginal costs. And last little piece here, average, average cost is the cost function, C of x, divided by x, meaning dividing by the number of items produced. All right, that finishes us off for this particular lesson. I hope it made sense. If not, there's obviously much, there's many more videos out there that you can find. Um, maybe I'll put a couple links in the description below. Um, Khan Academy will probably have some other, other things like that. All right, hope you guys learned a little bit. I will see you guys tomorrow.